was important, and I think you mentioned it in the book too, that it's important for a parent to expose their kid to lots of different types of music. My right. mother used to take me, every Sunday we would go to this jazz club in Washington, D.C. called One Step Down, and it was tiny. It held maybe 30 or 40 people, and they had this jazz workshop every Sunday where there was a house band, and the house band would play, um, and then there were a lot of jazz musicians in Washington, D.C., but also a lot of students that went to American universities right. where they would come and you'd sign your name on a piece of paper and the house band, after their first set, they would call you up and you could go up and jam with them. But these are like, this is like heavy D.C. old school jazz cats, you know. So the people that would come up to jam with them were... They were like accomplished, legitimate jazz And you musicians. never knew what you were going to hear. It might be a, a, a jazz guitarist. It could be a jazz flautist. It could be yeah. uh, another trump. I mean, you never knew. It was so exciting. And they were all pros. They were great. Yeah. And I loved it because I was listening to experimental music and getting weird. Um, so I could appreciate um, jazz and the improvisation and how wild it could be or how beautiful it could be and so i gotta tell the story so we so we went we went on my mother's birthday or it was around your birthday but that was that was the birthday that was the birthday we went to, the, to one step down and we sat down and at this point i'm kind of a, an established punk rock kid with stupid hair and ripped up jeans and so so we walk into the jazz club and the band's just ripping and my mom says to me she says you know what I want for my birthday? <laughs> I want you to get up there and play the drums. And I think I've been playing drums for a year. And Not I didn't jazz. Even, I didn't even have a drum set. I was learning on my bed, on pillows, playing along to minor threat records or whatever. And, uh, and I'm like, mom, this is jazz. I can't, there's no way. This, it's a whole other stratosphere. It's like, this is some other kind. She was like, please. It's my birthday. <laughs> so I thought, oh God. And I went and like hurried up there and signed my name on this piece of paper. Went back to my seat and just thought, please God, no, please God, please God, no, please God, no, please God. And then they finished their set. And Lawrence Wheatley, who at that point must have been 170 years old. He was scary. Yeah. He, he was just this. Sweet. He's always hunched over the piano. He looks at the paper and he goes, I know. Uh, we're call up Mr. Dave Grohl on the drums. And I remember I stood up like this, and the whole band looked at me like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I just kind of went up there and sat down and went, <laughs> two minutes. And, I know, yeah. anything for that. But all of that, <laughs> all of that to say that, um, you know, along with listening to Slayer and Venom and stuff like that, I was listening to Candide. Yeah. And I was listening to... And we would go when in the summer festivals at Wolf Trap Farm Park, we would go out and hear The Four Tops and The Temptations and Aretha Franklin and right. just everything because there was every kind of music around and we got to taste all of it. And I really think that's... I think that's good if you can do it, you know. You can do it in LA, certainly. You can do it in lots of places. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that was that was fun. It was always music. Who in the book were you I mean, I know you can't pick favorites because they're all wonderful people. I know. But what was a what was a, a special moment in the whole process that really made you feel like this was all coming together? Oh, uh, I, you know, I've, I've, I've really made, found, I've found friends doing this. We have so much in common, the mothers, the, the musicians. And uh, there were some, Verna Griffin, Dr. Dre's mom, yep. had such a compelling, sad, tragic story from beginning to, if, if you've seen Straight Outta Compton, you know that story. And it's, um, it's, it's amazing. And um, she's more fun than anybody on earth. She's just great. We're gonna do a radio show together next week. She's doing it from here, and I'm gonna be in New York, and I don't know what it's on. First of all, when your mother calls you and says, 
I just got off the phone with my publicist. It's like, what the fuck? You're what? <laughs> You're my mom. But you also loved it when I said, guess who I just talked to? Dr. Dre. Yeah. <laughs> well, I get these weird calls like, well, I gotta go. I have a um, call with Dr. Dre in about half an hour. <laughs> It's like, oh my goodness He's gracious. quite charming, by the way. And, well, uh, yeah. Um, you know, one of, I mean, one of the coolest nights of my entire life was a show that we did in Toronto. Uh, yeah, Canada. Hey, Toronto. Well, check this out. <laughs> hey. Uh, we did a gig in Toronto, and one of the mothers in the book is uh, Getty Lee, the bass player of Rush, is Getty's mother, Mary. Yeah. And um, so Mary came to the show, and... Um, She's 92 years old. Yes. And another awesome mom. She's cool. So to she sit there and... We did, out with we did a Rush like... song for her, so watching my mom <laughs> and Getty Lee's mom on the side of the stage in these old folding chairs <laughs> as we're doing 2112 in Toronto, you know, I just thought, this is yeah, weird, it was great. Yeah, yeah. She, um, she's a magnificent person. I, I really adored her. I've seen her. Actually, our whole family became friends. Um, I met everyone, met his sister, and we, yeah. we're friends now, and her son is in a band and he Recorded came here to studio. record in David's studio and David and I made dinner for him and I mean it's just like an expanding family because we all get it you know we understand what's going on but she was particularly lovely her past was so terrifying she was in a Nazi concentration camp during her young years and um, you know what I thought of the other day mm. the two oldest women Mary Morello Tom's mom and Getty Lee's mom, Mary Weinrib, um, probably crossed each other on the Atlantic Ocean in the post-World War II years. When Mary Morello 